All right, everyone, welcome back to Big League Dreaming, the podcast, a show about fulfilling your dreams and taking it to the next level. Today, we're talking college baseball, college baseball 2023. The World Series is upon us. The prediction show, or not the prediction show, uh, the brackets were announced today, and they had a full show for it. So I'm excited to dive into it. I'm here with my brothers, Zach and Zane. This is a podcast with three brothers and their dad. Dad didn't make it tonight. He's out uh, having a nice vacation with our mom, so I hope they're enjoying that. But Tonight, it's all three brothers, and we're talking college baseball. Did you guys watch the uh, selection show today? I did not. I wasn't able to. Uh, ended up taking the girls to the beach today, so I was I was out doing that during the selection show, but uh, I obviously got a bunch of alerts when the bracket was released, and it was it was cool kind of going through, seeing where everybody, everybody fell and landed, so I'm excited for this weekend. Yeah, yeah no, so- I... I, I didn't see it either. I was I was out at the field uh, working on some things, getting it all freshened up for, for the coming week. But, um, yeah, just kind of saw the aftermath and, and kind of people talking about it on Twitter. Yeah, I had it kind of on in the background a little bit. Uh, I was watching it here and there. I saw some uh, fun reactions from some teams that were kind of shocked they got in. And then uh, on the flip side, there were some other teams that – knew they were getting in and they just kind of just kind of sat there in their auditoriums. <laughs> I think Alabama was one of them. Like they showed like the glimpse of them once they got their spot and they all just kind of sat there and were like, all right. <laughs> the, the announcers were like, okay. And they, they just want to see who they're playing. So they're playing. Who are, who is Alabama playing? Let's get it pulled up. Uh, they're playing Troy. So they're playing um, Skylar Mead, former uh, Michigan state coach that I know. He took over the Troy program down in Alabama uh, in 2022. It was his first year as, as a head coach. Uh, after Michigan State, he went to the, the University of South Carolina, and he was the assistant coach there for the Gamecocks. So uh, 2022 was his first year as head coach. He put up like 32 wins or something like that, and now he's in a regional. So uh, pumped up for Skyler. He's a great guy. Yeah, and you never know uh, in this postseason uh, baseball, you never know who's going to win. I feel like there's always the one random team that does really well. The big sleeper pick, of course, we all know Stony Brook years ago and other Fresno schools in the past. Who's that? Fresno State when they were like had a, a rough year, won the won the their tournament to get in, and they ended up winning the whole entire College World Series. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So there's always uh there's always some fun moments during these college i mean uh even notre dame a few years ago when we were covering that where they went on a nice run too and uh michigan i think a year or two ago put a nice run together but yeah we're going to talk some predictions today if you're tuning into the show for the first time welcome we do this every single week and we're always talking different topics whether it's college baseball we have tons of different guests on we've had scouts on uh former major league players former minor league players so if it's your first time checking out uh, one of our podcasts, thank you. Let's get into the prediction show, guys. All right. Let's pull up the bracket. And let's talk about some teams who we're liking, maybe some uh, teams that might surprise some people. Or I think I know we were talking before we started recording. I saw – who was that I was talking about? You guys remember? They were like – Two lane. Like, Two lane, yeah. What were they like, fourteen and forty or something? Hmm. Nineteen and forty. Nineteen and forty. Yeah. I'm like, how did they even get in? Yeah, here they are. They're playing LSU. Oh man. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how that's gonna go. But you guys were saying they got in because they won their tournament. Yeah, they won the American League, American Conference uh, tournament. And obviously the powerhouse in that conference is ECU, East Carolina. They're they're getting an automatic bid. Um, so since Tulane won, they bought their way into the tournament. So pretty exciting for them. Yeah, I think that was one of the teams I saw have the little reaction to. Um, when they they got pulled up, they were all pretty happy and pretty ecstatic that they're they're in the tournament. Um, should we go one by one and uh, say who's coming out of each regional here? Sure. Who we like? Okay. So this regional here, who are we thinking? So are we going uh, each regional or the super regional? Uh, super regional, right? 
Okay, yeah. So Zane, you want to touch on the format? Just for our listeners that might not know how like the road to Omaha kind of works, but as far as yeah, so so the way it works is you have your regionals of four teams. Um, you know, they they rank the top what is it, sixteen teams. You got the top sixteen teams, each host a regional of four teams, um, double elimination. Um, after whoever wins that um, moves on to a super regional against another, obviously, winner of a regional. So, you know, they're kind of paired up, you know, in eight team groups. And then, you know, best of those four, best of those four play against each other in a three game series in the super regional. And then the winner from there moves on to Omaha in the men's college world series. So, I mean, we can kind of look at each grouping of eight teams and kind of see who's going to, you know, who we think is going to move on from, you know, each regional into the super regional and then probably who we think is going to come out of that super regional and go to Omaha. Perfect. All right. Love it. Let's get into it. Let's do it. So Wake Forest is the number one overall seed. Uh, they, they had an incredible year coming out of the ACC. Um, Wake Forest isn't really known for their baseball, uh, but it's hard. We're um, playing in the ACC. You have, you know, them and the SEC are the two big power conferences for baseball. I would, I would imagine. So they always have some tough competition. You think of some other teams coming out of the, out of the ACC that have historically been good. Wake Forest hasn't historically been good. So to see them slowly climb up the rankings to finish the year number one, pretty incredible. Yeah, they're. Wake Forest um, will be hosting the regional. Um, you know, they're going to have George Mason, um, Northeastern, and Maryland. Maryland out of the Big Ten. Um, they've had a really good year. They won the regular season and the tournament. So that's going to be, you know, the first grouping of four. Um, and I, I think, you know, there's kind of that curse with the number one C that they never kind of make it all the way to to win it all. So, um, but I, I think they come out of that regional, um, and that regional is paired with Alabama, um, in that regional with Nichols, uh, Troy and Boston college. So I think it's going to be probably wake forest and Alabama in that super regional. Um, and I think Alabama's playing really, really good baseball right now. I think they're playing with kind of a chip on their shoulder, um, ever since their coach got fired with, you know, some allegations of sports betting. They they looked really, really good in their conference tournament. So I think Alabama makes it to Omaha with, you know, having that chip on their shoulder ever since all that stuff went down with their coach. Alabama, you think, is getting through past Wake Forest. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I could see that. So out of this first side, we had, we're thinking Wake Forest, Alabama. And Zach, what do you think? you think Alabama will beat Wake Forest too? Uh, I don't know. I, I've seen a couple of Wake Forest games and I – I'd be shocked if they don't pull it off and go to Omaha. Um, obviously, I'd love to see Troy advance, but I think Wake Forest will move on. Wake Forest, yeah. All right, so Wake Forest, Alabama is kind of kind of the mix. No, no big sleepers, no big upsets coming out of this side of the bracket so far. Uh, should we move I mean, on? I think I think Maryland's probably the one team to watch out of the rest of those teams in that. Um, with just how good of a year they had, but Big Ten baseball, you know historically is just not quite the level as the ACC or SEC. So I think it's going to be an ACC SEC matchup in that super regional. Yeah, I agree for sure. For sure. Let's keep, let's keep moving on. Uh, should we stay on this left side of the bracket or should we? Yeah, yeah we'll left. just stay on the left side. All right. So we got out of here. We got Miami, Maine, Texas, Louisiana. We got Stanford, Texas A&M, Cal State Fullerton in uh san jose state um what are you guys thinking here i think stanford's pretty decent this year i want to say they're uh when i was watching the selection show today i think they're the only team hosting out of the west coast so i thought that was pretty interesting i know it's like east coast carolinas i i think uh i think miami got a pretty tough draw having to play texas and louisiana are both very good teams. So out of um out of all the host teams, I think uh Miami is definitely one that could get upset. Uh so I think 
either Louisiana or Texas could come out of there. Um, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I would, I would say Stanford will probably would, would probably move on, but I think Texas and Louisiana will make some noise. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Texas too, on that show, they were saying this is the first year in like, I want to say they said 15 years or something, a team from Texas is not a host team, which is pretty surprising. So um, yeah, look, definitely look out for Texas. And then another team I think you need to look out for, you can never count out uh, Cal State Fullerton. They're not having one of the better years that they've had, but that program's always um, that program's always pretty good. Um, I think their record was like 30-something and 20-something, but um, you can never count out Cal State Fullerton. So you never know. Yeah, I like, uh, you know, looking at Miami's regional, uh, I think um, Texas and it's going to come down to Texas and Miami. I think uh, Louisiana, I think, was one of those last four teams in. So, um, you know, you know, they could be hanging on to that a little bit, getting uh, an at-large bid. Um, but I think Texas comes out of that as well. Uh, I kind of am interested in the Stanford regional with Texas A&M. Cal State Fullerton and San Jose State like you were saying Ty Cal State Fullerton you know historically really really good program Um, they haven't really reached that kind of peak that they were in the 2000s um, late 90s 2000s but you know they still have that history and that tradition Um, and and Texas A&M has has had a really good year as well I think um, I think that's going to be a a pretty up in the air regional I could see um, it, it'd be really cool to see a Texas, Texas A&M uh, super regional. I think that would be awesome just for the sport and kind of that rivalry going at each other. It'd be really, really cool to see. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Texas A&M make it all the way to Omaha. Really? Yeah. Be, I mean, that's well, going to be... Uh, they have TCU's old coach. Oh, really? Is their head coach now, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's going to be – yeah, I think all the, these games in here are going to be really exciting to watch for sure. Should we keep moving on? Yep. Yep. All right, we're going to keep moving on to this regional down here. We got LSU, Tulane, like we talked about earlier, uh, Oregon State, Sam Houston, Kentucky, Ball State, West Virginia, and Indiana, Zane. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh... – Looking at LSU's regional, I think, you know, they're kind of one of the powers of, of the NCAA, um, you know, slate this year. I think LSU kind of runs through their regional. Um, Kentucky's kind of a team that's kind of burst onto the scene this year. Um, you know, they had a solid year last year, but now they're kind of showing that, you know, they kind of have that moxie to be able to host. So um, that one, that regional, I think is going to be interesting. I think it's going to be chippy with, you know, Kentucky, West Virginia can kind of swing it a little bit. Um, IU usually can pitch it. Um, and, and Ball State, a MAC school, you can never count out those those MAC teams. So, um, you know, I, I like LSU to win their regional. Um, I'm going to go out and probably – I'm going to say West Virginia. I'm going to go out and do something a little different. I'm going to say West Virginia is going to win that regional. Um, but at the end of the day, I think LSU makes it to Omaha. Yeah, I agree. I think I think LSU is just just one of those powerhouse schools that are almost I want I don't want to say guaranteed in, but it seems like they're in Omaha almost every year. So I think it's hard to say that they don't get into Omaha. Um, I like the West Virginia pick, and I like what you said about Ball State. Those MAC schools are always gritty and ready to play and ready to play some risky ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're I'm, used to I'm... that cold weather all year. Like, they're used to the cold weather and rain. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you guys. I'm rolling with LSU. Absolutely. Um, their their ace pitcher, Paul Skeens, what he's done this year has just been incredible, uh, setting the record for most strikeouts per nine. Um, you know, best pitching prospect since Steven Strasburg in 2009. Uh, this dude's going to be taken, if not one, number two overall. And the guy who's going to be taken <laughs> – uh, the other guy who's going to be taking one, maybe two overall, is uh, LSU center fielder Dylan Cruz. Uh, so they'll probably be, they'll probably go one two in the draft this summer. And when you have that type of ace on your mound, 
um, it's going to set you up to, to roll into Omaha. So uh, Dylan Cruz has been on fire all year long. I'll be shocked if LSU doesn't move, up, move on. Yeah, it's almost it's almost a lock at this point. Um, when we did the podcast earlier in the season, like right, right when college baseball started up, do you remember who we said was like the number one team at the time, Zach? When we did those power rankings, was it LSU? I'm pretty sure it was LSU and Tennessee. Yeah, that's Tennessee right. was definitely up there. We talked about Tennessee quite a bit. Yeah, Tennessee, and and they're not ranked in this, and but they're coming up on these regionals right here that we're going to talk about. But um, what happened with Tennessee season? I didn't I didn't um, stay up to date with that. SEC got them, man. It's a it's a tough conference. Uh, it's a tough conference. They had a little bit of inconsistency. Uh, Chase Dallander, their their Golden Boy ace pitcher, didn't uh, have as great of a year as expected, but he's still going to go top ten in the draft this summer. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, the SEC is tough, man. They're they're good top to bottom. Uh, I'm just hey, just go back and and watch our watch or listen to our podcast as the college season started and listen to what I said about Chase Dallander. All right, <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> you're spot on Zane did Zane did he pointed out what he didn't like about uh about Dallander and uh and there you go he didn't he didn't have the best season as people expected to so. I mean he's still really good <laughs> at the end he's he's still gonna get drafted in like the top five rounds he's still gonna be a top arm out there oh he's a top he's a first rounder for sure yeah, yeah. all right so who are we thinking for this regional well, you got Auburn hosting. Um, they have Penn, uh, Samford, and Southern Miss in their regional. Um, and then on the other side, Clemson will be hosting um, Lipscomb, Charlotte, and Tennessee. So, um, you know, I think Auburn and Southern Miss is going to kind of come down to those two in that regional. Um, I, I really like Auburn at home. Um, so I think they move on to a super you know, Clemson's Clemson's regional is going to be kind of tricky because, you know, you got Clemson who's had a really, really good year. I think they're, what does that say, overall four seed? Fourth, yeah. Um, so they've had a really good year with um, their new coach. Uh, you got um, Lipscomb who, you know, they can pitch pretty well, but they have their moments where they look shaky, um, but they can, they can swing it. I think they lost the first game of their conference tournament and then fought all their way back to win it all. So um, a lot of fight in that team. Um, Tennessee, you know, everyone's kind of known Tennessee for the last couple of years and, and what they've done, and they've made it to Omaha. And um, before, a very storied program. Um, but I think it's going to come down to Clemson and Auburn in that Super Regional. Um, and I think Clemson goes to Omaha um, with their new coach. I think Clemson moves on to Omaha as well because of how hot they are right now. Um, a month ago, they weren't even in the conversation to host, and now they're getting the number four overall seed. Uh, they're just they're winning game after game after game. Uh, they're clicking at the right time. I think just like you're talking about Alabama being hot right now, Clemson's very hot right now. So, but it's going to be tough. I mean, that first game they have to play on Friday against Lipscomb. Lipscomb, Lipscomb has a true ace. They have uh, Logan Vandertreek. And I'm sorry, Van Treek. Um, and this dude, I was looking at his numbers. He threw 82 innings this year, 101 strikeouts, and only 13 walks. Oh, my. I mean, he's not pitching in the ACC like Clemson is, but still, they're, the non-conference games, when you're playing at Lipscomb, which is right in Nashville, you're playing really tough teams for your non-conference games. Um, if you look back at their schedule, that that Logan kid had a great year. Last year, he didn't have one win last year. <laughs> Turned everything around oh. this offseason and is now a true ace. So I'll be watching that that Friday game at 1 o'clock against Clemson very closely. It'll be a fun game. Um, Tennessee is going to make some noise. Charlotte's my local team. I've seen them play a little bit this year. Uh, but I think Clemson's just too hot. I, I think they'll advance. So and we had one of Clemson's assistants on on the podcast. So exactly, you, know, you got to be pulling for him. Oh yeah, that's true. Got to be pulling for Clemson. 
And you, have to. you know what they say: if you uh, come on Big League Dream in the podcast, your team does well. I mean, look at the college, look at the Little League World Series team, right? <laughs> look at yeah. I mean, look at the Little League World Series team. Look at Notre Dame. We had some people from Notre Dame talking. I mean, it's almost a given at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with Limscombe being in, right in Nashville, do they play Vanderbilt at all? Do you guys know? Yeah, they played them this year, I'm pretty sure. They did, yeah. So that's, that is tough. So they definitely can play against those tough teams. So we'll have to see how well they do. All right, so we're halfway through. We're moving over to this other side of the bracket. Uh, in this regionals here, we have Florida, Florida, Florida A&M, UConn, uh, Texas Tech, South Carolina, Central Connecticut, NC State, and Campbell. Florida, Florida, man. Florida's really good this year. Yep. Florida's got that outfielder, Wyatt Langford. Uh, he'll probably be a top five pick this year. Um, Florida had a great year. I I like them. Um, Campbell had a really good year, too, which isn't too far from me uh, here in North Carolina, home of the fighting camels. Um, <laughs> they fell off a little bit. They were originally picked to host. Uh, they didn't end up posting. Somehow South Carolina got in after the tough end of the season that the Gamecocks had. They started the year, I think they were 11-1. and one. Like, they were super hot to start the year, but uh, just haven't been putting it together lately. Uh, I, I, I think the Gamecocks could get upset in their regional in Columbia this weekend uh, to either Campbell or NC State, but I, I like Florida to move on to Omaha. Yeah, I think uh, in Florida's regional, um, you know, you got Florida A&M, uh, Texas Tech, and UConn. Um, UConn usually has some really, really good arms. I think that's kind of a, a pitching factory up there. Um, they kind of just churn out arm after arm after arm. Um, so I could see them giving, you know, some of those teams um, fits. But uh, I think Florida, you know, comes out on top and wins that regional and goes on to a super Um and then kind of like what Zach was saying in South Carolina's regional, um, you know, South Carolina was top team in the country early on in the year. Um, you know, they were one of the best teams in, in all of Division One baseball for, for a while, but you kind of stopped hearing about them towards the end of the year. Um, so we'll see if they carry that on into the regional or if they kind of, you know, flip the switch and, and go back to where they were. Um, but I, I'm kind of – I'm going to say Campbell comes out of that regional. Um, and faces Florida in the Super Regional. You know, I kind of like that. Campbell's kind of the same thing as UConn, where they have really good arms. Um, you know, and, and at this stage in the game, it, it comes down to who's got the best pitching sometimes. Um, so I think it's going to be Florida and Campbell in the Super Regional. Um, and and I, I like Campbell going to Omaha. I, I think they're going to be the Cinderella team that makes it all the way to Omaha this year. All right. Well, you were uh, right on your predictions earlier in the year. You might be right on this one, too. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Have to, uh, we'll have to do a recap <laughs> it's, when it's Omaha is all baseball. done. You don't know what will happen. Picking upsets. Zane's picking all the upsets. I love it. Oh, yeah. We'll have to do a update when Omaha is over, and uh, I'll clip this. I'll clip this in right there when you're right. All right. I'll replay it. <laughs> Told you so. <laughs> Campbell, I like it. All right, we're moving on. In this next regional, we got Coastal Carolina, Ryder, Duke, UNCW, Virginia, Army. Oklahoma and East Carolina. This one is kind of a toss up. I feel like I feel like I look at these teams and it's like there's really about six six of them that could move to Omaha. I think Coastal Virginia, East Carolina, Oklahoma. I mean, those are all. This is gonna be a really fun one to watch. I think Duke is very good. Um, That's what I was gonna say. I think Duke is very good. This, uh, similar to the Miami upset, I think this could be a, a an upset regional here. Uh, f- un- unfortunately for uh, my wife's Shauna Clears in Conway, South Carolina. Um, uh, but UNC Wilmington, all, like you were saying, pitching factory. Wilmington always pitches really, really well. Uh, but I, I like Duke to come out of that regional. I don't know if, if Duke would be able to win two out of three against like Virginia or even ECU. ECU is super good. Um, but why not? Let's roll. Let's roll with Duke. Duke on to Omaha. Really? All right. I like it. There's there's Zach's upset. Yep. Um, 
But I, I'm with you. I, I like Duke. I like Duke a lot. Um, I think they move on to the Super for sure out of that um, regional with Coastal Carolina. Um, you know, I think what they've done with that program and, and kind of really turning into a, a really good baseball school, you know, I, I think people are starting to realize it's not just a basketball school. It's more than that. Um, so I, I really like Duke. Um, and then I think Virginia, you know, comes out of their regional with, Eastern Carolina, or sorry, East Carolina, Oklahoma, and Army. Um, and I, I think Virginia um, kind of just has that experience a little bit more uh, of playing in Super Regionals. So I think they kind of edge out Duke and, and make their way to Omaha. Yeah, Coach Brian O'Connor does a really good job uh, over at Virginia. I've been to I've been to a good amount of Virginia Cavaliers games. I really like their program. They got that Kyle Teal catcher. He's a great hitter. Virginia and Duke. All right, final predictions. And then we got, I think we have two more regionals left. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go with this one. We got Vanderbilt, Eastern. Who is that? Eastern. What is that? It's Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois. Never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're going to Omaha, baby. <laughs> I think that has to be my uh, upset pick right there over Vanderbilt. Over Vanderbilt. Yeah, no, never mind. <laughs> Oregon, Xavier, Oklahoma State, Oral Roberts. Okay, I didn't see that they got in. DBU and Washington. You don't even know who DBU is. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dallas Baptist. Come on, man. Oh, home of Ben Zobris. No, that's Dallas Baptist. Man, what... They're in the same conference as Charlotte, so I've seen them play here in Charlotte once or twice. People, people forget. Ben Zobers went to Dallas Baptist after he went to Olivet Nazarene, who's in our conference. Did he really? Yeah, he transferred there. <laughs> Dang. But anyways. Ben Hill. <laughs> yep, Ben Hill. He, he hit over 400 in my junior year. And Shout out Ben Hill. And he was Dang. the last out of that year. Um. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got Vanderbilt hosting – Eastern Illinois, Oregon, and Xavier. Um, I I think everyone's going to be leaning towards Vanderbilt. I'm going to be leaning towards Vanderbilt as well. Um, but I like them facing Xavier in the final. You know, Xavier is a, a team that we've been talking about, teams that are kind of hot. I think they're going to be riding the hot hand. Um, you know, they're playing really good baseball right now. Um, I think it's going to come down to Vanderbilt and Xavier in that regional Um mainly because LMC's old coach is, is one of the assistants there now. So he's a good dude <laughs> and I want to see him do well. Um, but I think Vanderbilt moves on to the super regional um, and, and kind of this, this other one with Oklahoma state, Oral Roberts, Washington, Dallas Baptist. It, it's kind of a toss up. I, I don't know much about um, those teams. That's a lot of, you know, West coast teams, teams that are kind of on later um, that I haven't really seen much of. Um, so I'm just going to kind of lean towards, you know, the seeding and say Oklahoma State. Um, so I think it's going to be Vanderbilt, Oklahoma State in that super regional. I think Vanderbilt goes to Omaha once again. Yeah, I'm with you on the on the Vandy pick. Um, I think they'll come out of out of their regional. Xavier, I like that pick as well. Um, I think I think Oklahoma State won't have too much trouble. With their uh, with their regional, I mean, they do have that ace pitcher, uh, Watts Brown, who's going to be a first rounder this year. Um, D Bap, they they always have a good good program. They like to upset some people. I'd like to see Washington, the Seattle team, do well. Go Mariners! Um, but yeah, I think what you were talking about earlier, Zane, how Vandy kind of has that that um, uh, experience, like Corbs over at Vandy. He, he's always going to have his team ready to go uh, when it comes tournament time. So I think Vandy will move on to Omaha, but I know Oklahoma State has some good pitching, so should be should be a good matchup. Yeah, Vanderbilt is – it would be kind of weird to not see them in an Omaha at this point. They're, it's just crazy to think about. You're just that good. You're just always in the World Series. I mean, yeah. Or to the point of thinking like, oh, it's just not, not the World Series without Vanderbilt. Yeah. I mean, they have to be in Omaha. They're, they're like always there pretty much. All right. So we're in our last regional. We got Indiana State, Wright State, Iowa, 
UNC, North Carolina, Arkansas, Santa Clara, TCU, and Arizona. Iowa's pretty good this year, aren't they? I want to say they were really good. I think they got over 40 wins, didn't they? You guys have the records pulled up? No, I don't. I had it pulled up earlier. Hang on, I can pull it up. I want to say Iowa did have a good year though. I might yeah, I might I might oh. be thinking. Yeah, be 42 thinking. and 14. Yeah. Decent. Iowa was gonna be my pick to come out of that regional. Yeah, I think I think they will come out of that regional. I don't know much about this Sycamore team out of Indiana State. I mean, I, first of all, I think it's awesome that there's going to be a regional in Terre Haute, Indiana. <laughs> like, how do you not root for <laughs> Indiana State when they have to go against the Tar Heels and a, a <laughs> Big Ten school, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm going to be rooting for <laughs> the Sycamores out of Indiana State. I think that's awesome. Um, I definitely need to look into their team a little bit more, see who they played this year, what kind of year they had, and things like that. But I'll definitely be pulling for Indiana State. I think that's great. Yeah, I, I like uh, – I think in Indiana State's regional, I think I, I really like Iowa. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of at the forefront of, you know, development and player development. And, you know, they're kind of one of the first schools that was all in on, you know, technology to kind of, you know, help their players develop along the way. So I, I think, you know, they kind of get over that hurdle, go to a super regional. Um, and, and then – Kind of in that other side of Arkansas hosting Santa Clara, Arizona, and TCU. Um, you know, I, I like Arkansas. Um, Arkansas has really good arms. They can swing it. Um, so I think it's going to be Iowa and Arkansas in the super in the super regional, and I think Arkansas moves on to Omaha. Arkansas. Well, Arkansas. Zach, you agree, Arkansas? I like TCU. I like TCU. TCU yeah. Maybe. Um, so Arkansas is a very tough environment to play in uh, at that at that ballpark. But TCU has their own very tough environment. That place is awesome. If you ever watch one of their games on TV, um, so I think they'll be able to handle that and step their game up to that level. I think I think TCU is going to move on. I know they got that third base in Braden Taylor, draft guy. Um, so I, I'm I'm thinking TCU is going to move on to Omaha. Who's the team that always their crowd chants like ball six, ball six when the pitcher is just throwing ball after ball? I think it's Texas A&M, isn't it? That's Texas A&M. I think so. Do they so still they... do that though? I don't, I don't know. know. They used to do it after intentional walks when you had when you had to actually throw the balls for intentional walks. They used to start chanting then. I know uh, Vanderbilt I doesn't they have still... the whistler anymore. The guy that would just whistle the whole dang time. <laughs> they don't have him anymore? Uh-uh. What? There's always shenanigans in college baseball. It'll be exciting to watch. Yeah, we're going to have to put our um, – we're going to have to try and come up with a, a graphic or something to, to put all of our, our picks out there so we can kind of come back and see who was right. Yeah, definitely. I can put that together and we can uh, follow it throughout the uh, World Series and see who's closest. Uh, final prediction for the winner, though, of the whole thing. What's everyone think? I don't know. It's, it's too early to tell. You got to watch the regionals and supers. I think I, we should just revisit it before Omaha and make our pick then. All right. Revisit it when all eight teams are in. Yeah. All That's right. fair. That's fair. But I do like LSU. I'll say that. Yeah, LSU is really good. <laughs> yeah, LSU in Florida. We'll have to revisit it in a couple weeks here. Uh, I think we're going to sign off for this podcast, but if it's your first time coming across our podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at BLD Pod. That's at BLD POD. We're also on TikTok at Big League Dreaming. We're on all the podcast uh, platforms wherever you listen to podcasts Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can check us out there. Thank you so much if this is your first time listening, and we'll see you next week for another podcast. See ya. See ya.